It was my childhood dream as a city boy to conquer the taiga. Perhaps it was because I read Jack London's books as a child. So after graduating from college, I went to the Far East by assignment. I had chosen this place myself. I had to work in a geological party in the taiga. There were six of us in the squad, the squad leader, two geologists, a geophysicist, me as a student, and a worker named Nikolai Maximovich, or simply Max. But I could never have guessed how hard it was to work in the taiga. In the summer, there were mosquitoes and black flies, and in the winter, the cold and deep snow were above our knees. The romance quickly disappeared, and harsh everyday life set in. But I even liked it. My character was tempered, and new acquaintances and new unexplored places made a great impression on me. It was the height of summer, and our geological party was searching in the Ashuri Taiga. Multi-day routes, especially in those days when there were almost no helicopters, as every geologist knows, are the most difficult and labor-intensive. Therefore, preparation for such routes is always careful and meticulous, as some overlooked detail can nullify all the effort spent for several days. We made a detailed list of necessary items and began to gather, carefully checking it. We set up our camp on the bank of a mountain stream in the taiga, put up three tents, and equipped a place for a fire. There was a spring five meters away from us, from which we took water to drink and cook. The days were sunny, and we set out on our routes only at dawn and returned in the deep twilight. After two weeks, we received a radio message that we urgently needed to come for supplies. Then the rains began, and the level of the river that was several kilometers away from us and separated us from the main base began to rise. The squad leader and both students, who were geologists, left early the next day for the base. Only Maximik and I were left at the campsite, and our colleagues promised to return the next day. It was our day off, and we were sitting by the campfire talking about life. I knew that Maximik was an avid hunter and from these parts. His village was located between our camp and the main base. Have you ever seen a live tiger in the taiga, Nikolai Maximovich? I asked him. Why do you want to know? he replied with a question. The animal is so beautiful. I would love to see it from afar, even just once, I answered. I wouldn't want to meet one again until we meet in the zoo, Nikolai said thoughtfully, tossing a log into the fire. A tiger is a dangerous and vengeful animal. It has a habit of following its pursuers and attacking them from behind. That's its usual maneuver. It's better to only encounter it with the owner of the taiga. Have you ever seen one? I asked again. Yes, not just seen it. Almost a year ago, in this same place where our camp is now located, I had such an encounter, he replied. Tell me about it, Maximik, I begged. I have a neighbor in the village who started his story, Nikolai is also a hunter. We went to the taiga to shoot some grouse. And if we're lucky, we'll get something bigger. But I don't really like to partner with him. He's too greedy and you never know what kind of surprise he might pull. Maybe you should throw caution to the wind and join me. He's too reckless and hasty. And that's not always a plus for a hunter. He kept insisting that we go together like a piece of paper stuck to me. It was easier to agree than to endure an unknown siege for who knows how long. We set out early in the morning on skis with guns and a small amount of supplies, deciding not to go too far and to return by evening. We went through the taiga tracking game, and just our luck, we kept encountering signs of a recent taiga presence. The tracks showed that it had just passed through here. We need to get out of here with the owner of this forest, I told my neighbor. Jokes aside, the taiga is no laughing matter. I don't want to meet here even a bit. But my partner refused to leave and insisted that we stay. Just as I said that, we suddenly saw a tiger at a short distance from us, behind the trees. He was walking slowly but proudly, with his characteristic haughty posture. 
He stopped and turned his head upward, swishing his tail back and forth, but he didn't see us. This fool had already aimed his gun at the tiger, and his hands were shaking. I barely had time to shout, don't you dare shoot, and hit his gun so that the shot went off into the air. The shot rang out and missed, but the tiger reacted instantly, jumping behind the bushes and looking intently in our direction before running away. Oh, you shouted at the neighbor, I thought he wanted to accuse us of something. As if he didn't know that hunting tigers is prohibited. Fortunately, I didn't hurt him and just kept shouting. I quickly gathered my things and left for the village. I didn't even look back at that idiot. I decided to hide in the taiga and not show up again, afraid that the tiger wouldn't forgive me, track me down, and kill me. More than a year has passed since then, and I only recently joined your party for work. Before that, I didn't leave the village at all. That's the story, Maximik concluded. In the evening, a strong wind suddenly blew. The trees groaned under its force, emitting creaks and cracks. All living things, birds and animals alike, seemed to be hiding in anticipation of trouble. This lasted for about two hours. The sky was covered with heavy leaden clouds that seemed to want to descend upon the earth, crushing it with their weight. The taiga was covered with a black blanket. The wind abruptly stopped, as if someone had turned off a huge fan up there. A sudden lightning bolt illuminated everything around, followed by a downpour. We were sitting in Maximica's tent. He was reading a book, and I was working on some materials. I had to finish my work, so I started a fire to keep warm and continue writing. Suddenly, we heard a terrible sound outside the tent wall. The storm was raging, the river was roaring, and the firewood was crackling. Suddenly, a sound caught my attention. It was as if someone was cutting the tarpaulin in several places with a sharp knife. When we ran out of the tent, we saw him, the tiger, the owner of the taiga. Our blood froze in our veins. We heard that growl that made our hair stand on end. Well, that's it, I thought. The tiger came for Maximik and me as well. He'll send us to the other world where one is alone and two is company. Meanwhile, the stream had turned into a raging river, carrying huge and heavy boulders. The campsite was flooded and the tent with our supplies was already starting to get submerged. The tent we were staying in was located on higher ground and there was hope that the water wouldn't reach it from above. But just then, something strange happened. The tiger started behaving oddly, moving towards higher ground and growling loudly. It began to climb up and we followed it. From the top, we could see the full force of the storm until dawn. We took shelter under a tree and waited for the storm to pass. In the morning, we saw that the campsite had been completely destroyed, but we were alive, thanks to the noble tiger that had warned us of the danger and shown us the way to safety. This was my first and last encounter with a tiger, the true king of the jungle. I have never met another like it. Saving people in distress is the belief that human beings uphold. We don't help others to ask for anything in return. This is because we are willing to show kindness to strangers. Humans don't just help humans. If we encounter animals in danger, we will not hesitate to lend a helping hand. But if wild animals like tigers and lions come to you for help, would you choose to leave them or overcome your fear and try to save them? Many people find it difficult to choose. But we must be clear that animals are kind by nature. A man heard someone knocking on the door, he went to the door curiously to check. After opening the door, he was shocked by the sight in front of him. Then he called the police. What did the man see? We all know that. When animals are injured, they will find a safe place to hide and heal themselves. Because they are at their weakest. If they are discovered by natural enemies at this time, they will be very dangerous. But some animals are very smart. When they are in trouble, they know how to ask humans for help. They trust humans. 
The story takes place in Khabarovsk, Russia. It just snowed. The ground is white. Not many people go out in this cold weather. Alexei lives in the local suburb. His house is located near a forest where tigers often come and go. Therefore, the local residents seldom set foot in the forest. Alexei hasn't been out for several days because of a cold. This morning, Alexei felt much better. He decided to go outside for some fresh air. Because it helps his body heal. Just as Alexei was walking towards the gate. There was a strange noise at the door. It doesn't sound like a human being. Alexei immediately became alert. He came to the door cautiously, ready to open the door to find out. He tried to open the door, but he failed. It looks like something is blocking the way. Alexei is puzzled. When he decided to push the door harder, there was a frightening roar from outside the house. Alexei was startled in place by the terrifying roar. He immediately stopped his hand pushing the door. Alexei is very familiar with this voice. Outside the door is a tiger. Because in his early years he had contact with a tiger. Alexei felt very scared. Because he can hear it with the voice. This is a huge adult tiger. Alexei is in a dilemma. Should he wait for the tiger to leave or call for rescue, just as he was thinking, there was another growl at the door. But this time, the roar was significantly weaker than last time. This time there was a faint sob in the voice, as if enduring pain. Alexei wondered, is the tiger injured, so it's down here. With a series of questions, Alexei hurried back to the house. He called Animal Rescue Center. Due to the cold weather and the heavy snow that just fell. There is thick snow on the ground, and the mountains are blocked by heavy snow. Many rescue organizations said they could not come to help. Alexei did not give up and continued to make phone calls. Finally he got in touch with an animal rescue organization. Alexei waited anxiously for the arrival of the rescue team. By the time the rescue team arrived, several hours had passed. The rescue team was surprised to find. The tiger lying at the door turned out to be a Siberian tiger. But the tiger is very tired at this time. It's covered with snowflakes. Rescue teams are on the move now. They work together to temporarily move the tiger to a nearby clearing. When Alexei came out of the house, he seemed to think of something after seeing the tiger. Then he had a very shocked expression on his face. Alexei not only met the tiger, but also saved its life. The lines on the tiger's body made Alexei recognize it immediately. A year ago, the tiger was a cub. Alexei met this injured tiger cub on his way to the forest. It got separated from its mother and it was so scared that it could only stay where it was. It has neither the ability to forage nor protect itself. Without the protection of its mother, it is bound to be attacked by other wild animals. Alexei saw such a poor cub and decided to help it. So he took the little tiger back home to recuperate. Alexei took good care of the cub for more than a month. The first thing he does after waking up every day is to feed the little tiger. Under the careful care of Alexei, the little tiger soon recovered. And it's getting stronger than before. After getting along for a long time, the little tiger has developed a deep dependence on Alexei. It takes Alexei as its mother. The little tiger still wants to go back to nature. On a sunny day, Alexei sent the cub to the place where he was found in the first place. A year later, this tiger has grown into a huge tiger. With nostalgia for the human mother, it came to Alexei's house again. Despite the tiger's big size, its body looks very frail. Luckily it didn't have any injuries. It shouldn't be injured. What kind of danger did it encounter? The rescue team took the tiger to a local animal rehabilitation center. After a check, doctors found that. 
the tiger had serious teeth and gum problems. In fact, it has no upper teeth. It can't eat properly at all. That's why it's so weak. It lay in front of Alexei's house in order to seek help from its former human mother. In addition to feeling incredible, Alexei is more grateful and gratified. Because of the generosity a year ago. When the tiger encountered difficulties again, it immediately thought of Alexei. It trusts a human being so much, it seems that the tiger has always remembered this kindness. Doctors say the tiger will be treated after being anesthetized. They'll do whatever it takes to bring it back to health. With the efforts of doctors in the rehabilitation center. Tiger slowly recovering from weakness. The tiger has gum disease, but it can also slowly eat some antibiotics and minced meat. Alexei visited him every day throughout the treatment. It keeps an eye on the tiger's physical changes. I believe that under the careful care of the doctor and Alexei, the tiger will soon be back to health and run in the big forest. Do you know? There are only more than 500 Siberian tigers left in the wild in the world. They are being abused from all sides. The protection of endangered wild animals is a problem that human beings must pay attention to. The tiger in the story may have suffered from a human. But it will choose to trust humans again. This trust is touching. Luckily, the humans this tiger trusts are kind. Many wild animals in the world are at risk of extinction. As species living on the earth. We must try our best to change the living conditions of these animals. This is also helping ourselves. Harmony between humans and animals. We have to help those wild animals in danger with good intentions. These are the goals we need to work towards together. Let every wild animal have its own world.